What's up, family? And again, a huge, huge day in the NFL. This is all the chaos and the drama. I will update you on it. But I got to apologize because yesterday I didn't really bring into consideration how big a day what we're talking about truly is. NFL players, football players, collegiately and in high school, they work their entire lives for today for yesterday, for this week. What am I saying? For that second contract. See, that second contract is that life-changing, never have to work another day in your life type of money. I was a six-round pick in the National Football League. I signed a four-year, $2 million deal, but I got cut. I didn't see all of it. The money we're talking about today, that's not that two, three, four-year kind of money. That's life-changing, generational types of dollars. So allow me to apologize for foregoing that information and let you all know just how important the conversations we're having to they are. Dreams are realized. Generations are changed. Mortgages are paid off for parents. It's that kind of day. Now let's get to it. Patrick Queen, that's the latest big deal. Linebacker for the Baltimore Ravens, he's going to the Steelers. That's huge. Derrick Henry, he's going to the Baltimore Ravens, leaving the Tennessee Titans. But what nobody's really mentioned, Sam Darnold, that happened overnight. Signs with the Minnesota Vikings. Now that Kirk Cousins is gone, Darnold might be the starter if they cannot trade up and get a quarterback. And lastly, think about the rivalry. Aaron Jones leaves the Packers, where he dominated there and goes to the division rival, Minnesota Vikings. But everybody zoom in for a second on Derrick Henry because Derrick Henry is an absolute dog and an absolute beast for the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens were the best team in football last year during the regular season. But think about the missing piece. The Ravens have only had one running back rush for 1,000 yards since 2018. That's Mark Ingram. Derrick Henry, he's done it five times in the last six seasons. But more than the talent, the best ability is availability. The Ravens, they've only had one running back start 10-plus games since that 2018 stretch, 2019 stretch. Again, that's Mark Ingram. Derrick Henry has done it five of the last six seasons. I do not think there has been a better puzzle piece fitting into a team than the Derrick Henry acquisition to the Baltimore Ravens. Heading to the desk. Dave Hellman, how are we, my friend? Good to be back. Still not 2-5, I'm sorry. You're still not 2-5, but your takes, they will be live. James Jones. There you go, there you go. That's a bar. What's up with it? That's a bar. You know, I'm just chilling, man. I'm happy to be here. James, for a second, big dog, if I should have done this yesterday, again, I apologize to Uh the viewers. Free agency. Yeah. How big a deal is it? How special is it? Before we get to all the hot takes, y'all can hear those anywhere in the world. Y'all can see them on Twitter. But what you can't get is NFL touchdown leading experience, 2012 James Jones, Super Bowl champ experience, James Jones, a man who signed a second deal, signed a third deal. What is a player thinking about, like, how big a deal is free agency? Well, that second deal is different than the third deal, right? Because the second deal is I need to get all the money. (laughs) <laughs> I possibly can get. You're excited. You worked your tail off to get to this point. Okay, they didn't want to extend me during the season. I've made it to free agency. Now I'm trying to chase the money, right? You you brought it up. Very, very well said, right? High school, Pop Warner, college, all that. You are working your way up to get to this point, to be able to sign the biggest deal of your life to set yourself up. That's first deal. I mean, your second deal. When you get to your third deal, now it's kind of like King Henry. Where can I go to win a Super Bowl? Or where can I go to perform at a very, very high level and have a chance to compete and still earn some money? So that's a little different, second and third deal. Before we get to King Henry, Joy Taylor, you have also seen these deals signed. Obviously, uh, your brother, Hall of Famer. When you think about free agency and the life-changing aspects of free agency, because before we talk about just how much it matters, Mm. I want to talk about why it matters so much. What comes to mind when you think about, like, where we are right now and the monumental nature of what we're discussing? I mean, I think the game has changed a lot because we we do tend to recognize how much of a business it is and the transaction of it and the fans' reactions to the transaction mm-hmm. of it. I mean, a lot of the conversations that we have surrounding the NBA is who's going to move, who's yeah. going to stay. We talk almost more about players moving to new teams than we do the actual games mm-hmm. at some points in the season. So free agency in general in sports has become huge. Obviously, the money aspect of it, but teams are trying to – acquire pieces to help win a championship. So it's it's so much bigger than just the, you know, the fantasy football that we like to play and, you know, moving pieces around. And we mentioned this briefly yesterday, but 
some of these pieces are not going to work out, yeah. right? Like some sometimes there's <laughs> going to be a big acquisition where someone makes a lot of money and it's going to turn out to be disappointing. And some very, very quiet ones will end up being some of the biggest moves that teams make. So it is a really big time for the sport. It's, it's grown and expanded a lot and become a big part of how people build their rosters. James, quickly, before we get to Derrick Henry, because that is the news of the day, when you signed your second deal, when yeah. you saw that three, four, five million dollar lump sum check, Man. what's the first thing you bought? Did you buy your mom's a house? Yes, Did you buy that is. Really? That's the first thing I bought. I told my mom my second contract. I was a third-round pick. I said, let me make the team. That was my dream as a young kid. Y'all know my story, growing up homeless. So when I signed my second deal, the first thing I did was buy my mom a house, gave her the keys to the house. I might start tearing up crying right now. But, yeah, that's the first thing I did with my second deal, man. Where was the house mama. The house is in California, Mountain House, California. Yeah, bought her a nice little house upstairs, downstairs. She was plushed out, you know what I mean? No bills. She good. <laughs> did she know it was coming? She's still taken care of to this day. She, did, she knew eventually the house was coming, but she didn't know when. So I just picked her up. I said, man, we finna go do something. You know, your grandbabies want to see you. And we pulled up to the crib. Oh, so you surprised her, too. She was surprised. I love it. I love it. That, that is what free agency is, family. Like, before everybody talks to you about numbers that you may not be able to realize, understand, it's not just about numbers. This is lives being changed. This is players who have worked tirelessly for 25, 26 years to achieve this one dream. So let's not talk about it flippantly. It is X's and O's on the field, but it's real life off of the field. King Henry Joy Taylor joins the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens were the best team in football last year during the regular season. Ravens have not had a consistent running game. Derrick Henry has been the most consistent running back in the last six years, including a 2,000-yard season, 1,500-yard seasons. Derrick Henry is the epitome of an NFL running back, and the Ravens lack a running game. What does the signing mean? Does it mean as much as we think and hope? I think so. I mean, I am a big Derrick Henry fan. A, a, a king and a gentleman, Derrick Henry, mm -hmm. at, the, at the big age of 30 years old at a running back position. Ancient by running back. <laughs> For sure, but means nothing. He had 1,167 rushing yards last season. That was the second most in the NFL behind only Christian McCaffrey, who we speak of in very rare air. He led the league with 280 rushing attempts last year, and he has led the league in rushing attempts four of the last five seasons. He is very consistent. He has a very consistent style of running. And I think that when you think of the Baltimore Ravens, we think of their run game. But you just outlined it. It's not been because of one guy no. not named Lamar Jackson. The run game has been Lamar Jackson and committee. And they're plugging players who, who have done a nice job, but it hasn't really been the guy. And pairing that with what Lamar Jackson does, with the style of offense that they run, which their identity as a team, I think is very exciting. I am, like I said, a big Derrick Henry fan. I think his numbers continue to back up what he is capable of doing. And he's doing that without a roster like the Baltimore Ravens have put together. So I think it's really exciting. I think it is a big move. I don't know how much it changes, you know, if they run into the Chiefs <laughs> in the AFC Championship no. game. But it would be nice for them to get back to the AFC Championship game, mm -hmm. which is something that they've done for the first time this year. So I think he's a big asset to the team, and I'm excited to see what he does in that offense. Derrick Henry, y'all can see his tweet on the screen. Flock Nation, I swear mm -hmm. it's up. Uh, Dave, before we get to the Ravens and being able to compete with the Chiefs, I do believe what Derrick Henry does is add one to two more years to Lamar Jackson's career. Let nobody forget the most important thing I think he does is add an additional year or two to Lamar Jackson's career. Think of quarterbacks that have been incredibly effective and efficient running the football. Michael Vitt. Think about his prime. His prime was really his third year, fourth year in the National Football League Conference Championship game. Cam Newton, think about his prime. Cam Newton's prime was his fifth year in the National Football League where he was NFL MVP. Think about Robert Griffin. His prime was his first year in the National Football League, his rookie season. Acquiring Derrick Henry allows Lamar Jackson to take some tread off of his tires. Lamar Jackson has had over 110 rushing attempts every year for the last four or five years. Meanwhile, Derrick Henry, he leads the National Football League in rushing attempts at the running back position for the the last five years only time he didn't is because he got hurt only played eight games but still had 219 attempts so with that being said most importantly you protect your most prized asset in Lamar Jackson by acquiring Derrick Henry that's cool and all but what does it do for winning mm. like what, what's Derrick Henry do for the Ravens winning they lost to the Chiefs in the AFC championship game last year what's it do for winning okay well I mean it's a it's a dark place to be in the NFC or AFC let's just put that out there because I mean the Ravens we're already here. They're already the number one seed in the conference. They hosted the Chiefs at M&T Bank. So, I mean, it's, it's a dark place to be like, we're, we're one of the best teams in the NFL, but can we beat the Chiefs and, and a, a down Chiefs team? That's the crazy thing about what the Chiefs mm -hmm. have done is these were supposedly steps back 
where they repeated as Super mm. Bowl champions. So, sorry, Ravens. I can't get up here on a soapbox and, and shout that you're the Super Bowl champion when the Chiefs have already done that. But at the same time, I'm, I think this means a boatload for the Ravens. I think you're right. I think it helps protect Lamar Jackson. I think it adds better balance to their offense. This is, again, they've, they've done such a good job with running back by committee because that's what it's been. This feels like a, a course correction to the decision to draft J.K. Dobbins. Mm. J.K. Dobbins, they spent a big draft pick on him. They wanted him to be their feature back. It's not his fault. It's injury-related, but it didn't work out. You say, how can we fix that as efficiently as as pragmatically as possible it's to go get derrick henry and by the way this is boring but they did it on their terms derrick henry who had 1100 yards last year king henry one of the best most consistent running backs in the league two years up to 20 million nine million guaranteed they got him for less than what deandre swift got the day before for less than what saquon barkley got and derrick henry has been more consistent than any of those guys so to get it on their terms without changing the, the calculus of their salary cap, because remember, the, the money for Lamar Jackson is going to start coming in. Like yep. it, It's going to be hard to put talent around him the more expensive he gets. So to get Derrick Henry on a cheap deal, I don't think it messes with their salary cap. It gives them a workhorse. I think about this a lot, James. Remember, we talked about uh, the Steelers beating the Ravens yep. last year, right? <clears throat> it's because the Ravens, when they're not rolling, they've struggled to put games away. That game, one of the most ridiculous yeah. games I've ever seen where the Ravens just could not get that knockout punch. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the Steelers start doing things in the fourth quarter. Lamar throws an end zone interception, and you lose to the Steelers, and the Ravens say, how the hell did this happen? Yeah. Didn't cost them the number one overall seed in the long run, but this was a team that I don't think was set up as well as possible to deliver that knockout punch. Mm -hmm. When you have Derrick Henry, I think you are. I think it makes yeah. him a more balanced team, a more dangerous team. Yeah. Um, I didn't think it meant much until I sat down in my locker room, and I was like, hold up. I'm thinking about the AFC hold on, hold on, hold on. James, what's up? You're not in the NFL anymore. He, 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 no, I still got a locker room. It's his locker room. It's, 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 it's my don't, locker room. It's a dressing room. I just, we, America, we I just can I clarify? Dressing room. We, we have our meeting. It's our locker Thank room. Thank you, Joy. Joy. I'm like, at home, they're probably like, James' locker room. I, I, missed, I missed this free agency <laughs> signing. Who did James sign with? He's, oh, he's, oh, he's referring to his dressing room. Keep dressing. calling it your locker room, big yes, dog. I don't want to mess up your phone. My locker room, right? As I'm sitting in my locker room with my uniforms in there, because my uniforms is in there. Okay, okay. His uniform, America, it is not a helmet. There are no cleats. He is talking about you know that lavender, you know that, 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 that small yes, suit man. that he has. Anyway, you're putting on your uniform yeah, I was looking in your at locker my, room. Yeah, I was looking at my uniform, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Doing, getting myself ready, and I'm like, they was in the AFC Championship last year. Number one seed against the Kansas City Chiefs, who we feel that was in the AFC Championship game with a worse team, right? Coming out of the AFC Championship game, all we said was, why they did, didn't they run the football, right? Todd Munkin came out and said, I wanted to put the ball in my quarterback's hands. Nobody can argue that. MVP of the National Football League, put the ball in your quarterback hands. I think this helps Munkin, and I think this helps them get over the hump of the Kansas City Chiefs if they're able to get themselves back in that position in the AFC Championship game. And the reason why I say that is, who was they running backs last year? Gus. Justice Hill. Justice, Justice Hill. Mitchell. Bunch of dudes. So as a coach, you can say, I'd rather Lamar. I'd rather give the ball mm -hmm. to Lamar. Mm -hmm. Gus, Justice. Absolutely. That's a good point. Now That's good you're sitting point. back there like, ooh. Point. I need to give the ball to King Henry. Might change the way he calls that game if King Henry was on that yeah. team. Going to change the way he's opening up this season or co calling the games this next season, knowing that he has King Henry. Another thing, defensively, you're not getting off the bus saying we got to stop Gus and we got to nope. stop Justice Hill. Nope. We have to stop Lamar Jackson. We are going to have a spy on Lamar Jackson. Teams play Lamar Jackson different. So now Lamar Jackson taking an extra guy out of the box and you have to deal with King Henry knowing getting off the bus, you got to stop King Henry. I think this team, especially offensively, the way they set up right now with King Henry, this can get them over the hump and beat the Kansas City Chiefs, in my humble opinion. I think it's an interesting point, too. Like, going along with what you just said, Yes, Derrick Henry, he, he'll be the focal point, but there's enough other stuff there that you can keep him fresh mm -hmm. for those moments. Like, Derrick Henry doesn't need to rush 25 times per game every game. And when you get to the fourth quarter of these games, you say, 
hand the ball to mm-hmm. this guy and he'll get us over the finish line. Absolutely. But which one is it, Joy? Because in, in one side of the equation, we're saying, well, Derrick Henry, he's capable of having 300 rushing attempts, and I do believe he should have 200-plus next year. That's why you acquire Derrick Henry. But then I hear Dave saying and James saying, and I don't disagree really at all, if, if, if any, well, you can keep him fresh. You don't got to use him that much. You acquire Derrick Henry yeah. to use him. You know what I'm saying? Like, you acquire a bell cow to be a bell cow. There's a difference between using them and 300-plus touches. That's my only point. Got it. I mean, you know. But again. I think I mean, naturally I that's going to work do have some up. depth at the running back position as well. And, sure. and part of having him back there and the threat that you're mm-hmm. talking about is Lamar is still going to run the ball. No, like, Lamar that's is still going to have designed runs. Yes. He's still going to have the ability to, to run the ball himself. So it, it, there shouldn't be an overusage of Derrick Henry to begin with. You, what it does is create a real threat at that position. They have depth, and they still have Lamar Jackson, who's the best runner of the football in the league at the moment. So I, I think it just puts a little bit of extra fear, and the fear is mm-hmm. validated because of the numbers that he consistently puts up and the, the home run ability that Derrick Henry has. He's one of those guys that can get the ball and score immediately. Yeah. Yeah, this and, t- and Todd, this don't worry be. about that. No. Go off a track record. Which this mean? dude has showed you year in and year out, it don't matter how many carries you give me. I'm going to be here, and I'm going to make sure that I get my yards, and I'm going to make sure I help us win some, win some football games, right? The load has never been too much for Derrick Henry. Sure. Every uh, 200, 300. 250. I mean, he led the league in He shows you that I can handle this. So what I'm curious is, is did they sign him a year too late? What I mean by that is I loved Greg Roman as an offensive coordinator. Greg mm-hmm. Roman makes his mark running the ball. Yeah. And he makes his mark running the ball out of running formations. Yeah. Derrick Henry made his mark running the ball out of running formations. Ryan Tannehill was there. They had yeah. a fullback. They had a tight end. They had a wide back. They had a U back, whatever your offense refers to them as. And Derrick Henry was going downhill. Now you have Todd Munkin. Last year, they lived in 10 and 11 personnel. Yeah. You spreading it out. We got Odell. We got Aguilar. We got Bateman. We got your dude, Zay Flowers. Yeah. We got four former first-round wide receivers. Mm-hmm. So they, they changed their mentality of, you know what, running can only get us so far. Let's spread it out. Now it appears they're changing their mentality, or maybe not, but at least acquiring Derrick Henry, which tells you, okay, let's lean back into the run game. Do you think, Dave, that they acquired Derrick Henry one year too late? I would hope, though. And, I mean, I'm, you're not going to rewrite your playbook, but a good coach should be able to adapt to his personnel. Last year we had running back by committee. Nobody we implicitly trust. This year we have Derrick Henry also Keep in mind, Mark Andrews, back healthy. Isaiah Likely, their tight end, too, came on strong at the end of last year. You say, hey, we got two tight ends and a badass running back. We can pivot this thing a little bit, be a little more open to running in that downhill style. Like I said, I don't think you throw out your playbook, but hopefully I would think Todd Monken can adapt it for his new personnel. And not, and not only that, right, do the Niners have a power running game? Yeah. Absolutely. They in jumbo all the time? No. No, but they're in 21. Yeah, 21 they live personnel. In 21. And they spread people out, too, in the 21 personnel. So, for me, I just remember playing with Eddie Lacy when Eddie Lacy was in his prime, mm. right? And I remember Eddie Lacy coming into our wide receiver room when we was meeting, yep. talking about F Eddie Lacy, how many times should we trying to throw this ball? And Lacy <laughs> came in there and he said, hey, man, I need y'all to do me a favor. I need y'all to get with Coach Mike, and we need to get out of jumbo. Uh-huh. Let's spread these boys out so it's less people in the box and you guys stay on the corner, leave the safety to me. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, a lot of times people don't know we got, as receivers, you have a push crack to where if the corner fall off, you got to come and crack the safety, right? And the running back will bounce it off you and the corner says, Eddie said, no, 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 no. (laughs) Leave me the safety because I can see him coming at me. Let's spread him out. We got to get out of jumbo formation. There's too many people in there. Could you imagine Derrick Henry with Lamar Jackson? With less people in the box, one-on-one with the safety, how many times is that safety going to make that tackle? That's a good point. That safety finna dive at his ankles a good point. because he ain't going to hit him up top, and it's going to be like Bernie Mac said, trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Family, there is trouble in the NFC East because staying in the running back room, Saquon Barkley, maybe the most talented running back in football, not named Christian McCaffrey, is on the move, leaving the Giants headed to the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, it kicked up a lot of dust with former Giant Tiki Barber. But right now, how much pressure does Saquon Barkley put on quarterback Jalen Hurts? He had a bad season last year. He's an all-pro talent. Is it time for Hurts to put up or shut up? That is next. Next on Speak. Don't forget, check us out every day. Fox Sports Channel. Serious. Except.
Family, we are in second and short, the biggest show this offseason, Free Agent Frenzy, where lives are being changed due to money that is being put in people's pockets. Saquon Barkley, superstar running back, leaves the New York Giants, and he joins the Philadelphia Eagles. But let me break it down for you. A.J. Brown, first-round pick, $100 million receiver. Devontae Smith, first-round pick wide receiver, won the Heisman. Jalen Hurts, second-round quarterback, all-pro wide receiver. Dallas Goddard, second-round tight end. And then in the backfield, you got first-round top-five pick Saquon Barkley. James Jones, you know I love me, the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not so ignorant nor so arrogant to acknowledge or ignore, not acknowledge or ignore, the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah. I think the Eagles got the best skill position group in all of football now. Yeah. And the Niners are either tied for first or a close second. Mm-hmm. With that being said, if you Jalen Hurst, you have no excuse. None. No excuse. <laughs> None. Imagine being a quarterback having Saquon in the bar- backfield oh, when you do that. My goodness. You want to throw the go ball, you see Devontae. You want to throw the dig route, you see AJ. You want to throw the check down, you see Goddard. Mm-hmm. It does not get better. How much pressure is now on Jalen Hurts with the Saquon Barkley sign? <laughs> All of it, all of it is on him, and all of it is on Coach Nick Sirianni. You're an offensive coach. Your quarterback took a huge step backwards last year. And you can say whatever you want to say. New offensive coordinator, whatever you want. New running back, whatever you want. He took a huge step backwards. Now you have an all-pro A.J. Brown. Mm. Now you have Devontae Smith, who's going to be a $100 million receiver. Mm -hmm. And you have a big-time running back in the backfield with a big-time tight end. All the pressure is on you. If you do not deliver and you take a step back, what else can we do for you? Like, literally, what else can we do to help you succeed? You have everything. Any quarterback would trade their job right now to be in your position. True. Whoever it is, Josh Allen, Patty Mahomes, whoever it is, with what you have over there, any quarterback would trade you to have your skill positions. You have to deliver. All the pressure is going to be on you to get this offense rolling. And to be honest with you, this team is going to have to be an offensive football team. They're going to have to win games on offense. They are not going to have a big-time defense over there. They're losing key pieces on the defensive side of the ball. They were not a good defense last year. They're not just going to be this lockdown defense like they were a couple years uh, prior. They have to win games on the offensive end. Can Jalen Hurts do it? All the pressure's on him. You don't have your center there no more. Who covered up a lot, checking into a lot of stuff. You're going to have to do that. All the pressure is on you to be able to deliver. And they gave you all that money to do it. To do it. True. So this is the time that he's going to have to show I'm that guy and I can do it. And he has everything around him to be successful. I can't wait. Honestly, Drew, I can't wait for your man, answer. Man, man. <laughs> I, I, I love this topic, so I can't wait for everybody's answer. But every now and then, I'll just be waiting to hear what Joy's yeah, going to say. Yeah. And this is now and then. Yeah, so, Joy, yeah. does Saquon signing put all the pressure on Hurts? How much pressure does it put on him? Yeah, I mean, I think he already had all the pressure on him. So this just mm. adds to it. I agree with everything James just said. This was not a good year for the Philadelphia Eagles, mm. especially coming off of a, a Super Bowl appearance where the quarterback did play well. Everyone felt really incredible about what their defense was doing. Nick Sirianni was riding very high. And then it was like, Mm -hmm. very quickly. And we kind of disregard the fact that they they did have a pretty nice stretch during the regular season. Mm -hmm. Now we constantly came in every single day and said, well, they're they're winning, but they're not really winning in a good way. And then we said that every day for like 10 weeks straight. (laughs) And then it fell off a cliff. So they had a bad season. They had a bad end to their season, I will say. A bad end to their season. So the expectations are already super high. There, we immediately started questioning whether Jalen Hurts is a legitimate quarterback. Mm-hmm. Well, how much does he need? Does he need a perfect roster in order to win? So the pressure was already there, and I'm glad that they gave him another weapon to work with. Look, you're a quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles. There's pressure. There's pressure for any quarterback in this league, but especially a player like Jalen Hurts who went to and played in the Super Bowl against Patrick Mahomes and played well enough to win. There's expectations, there's pressure, there's questions that need answered, and you're coming off of a really disappointing season. So I think that the pressure was already there. I think this move adds pressure, but I also feel good about it because you should be giving your young quarterback weapons. Dave, let's talk. I don't think you're going to like what I have to say, but go ahead. Me and Dave had a lot of off-camera conversations about Jalen Hurts at the end of his all-pro season. I won't bring them on camera because I want to protect the guilty, however you interpret guilty here. You were part of those conversations. (laughs) (laughs) Dave, Jalen Hurts, we don't – I don't know just how great he is. I'll be honest, I don't. Maybe you do, I don't. Now you have Saquon Barkley. It don't get better. Saquon Barkley's had 2,000 yards in a season. 
A.J. Brown's had like 1,400 in a season. Devontae Smith is a, maybe the best number two wide receiver in football. Yeah, yeah, So Where's, what's the bad thing? Where are you going The bad thing is, does he have to deliver, like Super Bowl deliver this time and stop playing the other game? Of course. But so like, yeah, of, of course. Not to steal Joy's thing, but this is Philadelphia. What are we talking about here? They tried to fire the coach a year after the Super Bowl. Carson Wentz was out of there like two and a half years after he was the MVP frontrunner for a lot of the year. This, that's how it works. If you're not great in Philly, you get out. That's just that's how it goes. I don't think that's bad for Jalen Hurts, though. That's just the status quo. If anything, I think there's less pressure on Jalen Hurts right yes. now. How? Because he's got the best supporting cast to help him out. Well, what's the debate? How good is Jalen Hurts really? Does it matter if you have all of this talent? I'll take it back to Brock Purdy. That's the conversation about this poor guy every day. It's like, well, yeah, but he's got McCaffrey just taking his dump offs to the house. He's got Debo catching a three-yard ball and taking it 40 yards. That is what the Eagles have the potential to have now. But here's it the, doesn't matter here's how the good dilemma, Jalen Hurts is. If he's, I mean, we know he's good enough to win games. But he's here, done that. here's the dilemma. The better supporting cast. Last year, better. last year, Purdy actually did yeah. that. He took his team to the Super Bowl. Now, the team didn't win, obviously, for more Jalen Hurts has already taken his team to the Super Bowl. But he already did that. But last year, he took a major step back. Like, like if you look at the last two years. With a lot of weapons. Last too. two years, sure. Purdy's been more consistent than Jalen Hurts, which is a crazy thing to say. But in the last two years, he's been more consistent than Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts has Lane Johnson, who at one point in time was the highest paid offensive tackle in history. Landon Dickerson, at one point in time was the highest paid guard in the NFL. You got Saquon Barkley. You maybe are so good at listing off all of this stuff. <laughs> I just want you to know I'm just, I don't want the world to realize the amount of help that Jalen Hurts has offensively. It's unheralded. Okay. Like it, it is unheralded. Okay. Here, here's the counter. Here, here's the alternative. And I cover and follow the Dallas Cowboys, so I know all about it. The alternative is we're paying you $45, $50 million, so go without. Do more with less. Why should we go get Saquon Barkley when we're paying you $50 million? You're supposed to make the difference. Right. The Eagles know that that's not winning football. The Eagles are like, hey, man, you're good. But you need help. You need good players around you. We're going to go get you the best of the best. And guess what? It, it wouldn't matter if Temple was lining up with Jalen Hurts. If he wasn't good, they would run him out of there. That's what happens in cities like Philly. So the pressure is going to be there regardless because you're the quarterback of the Eagles. But Jalen Hurts should be thrilled that there's only maybe one or two teams in the NFL that have more on, on offense than he does. I think you're maybe shifting mm. – the meaning of the word pressure mm. for this conversation. Why? Because, like, literally he has less pressure because he has more help. Like, yeah. in the way that he is able to play the game. Correct. And the options that he Expectations, has. Expectations, On the people so, yeah. that yeah, he yeah, can yeah, lean yeah. on, sure. on the way that they can run the offense, on the star power around him, on the ability for guys to rise up on any given Sunday and give spectacular performances. In that sense, yes, there is less pressure on him because he is getting more help. That's the word on the screen is Correct. pressure. But what we're talking about <laughs> is if he struggles. Yes. If he does well, no one cares, cares because Brock Purdy is a great example of that. Maybe we don't know how good Brock Purdy is, but it doesn't matter because oh. he's winning games and he's getting his team to the Super Bowl. And it really didn't matter with Jalen Hurts because – we sat up here and said the same thing. I, could, I mean, Brock Purdy was in the MVP conversation this, th this mm -hmm. year. Jalen Hurts was an all-pro last year. So whether you think one is more talented than the other, I certainly think Jalen Hurts is more physically talented, but it doesn't matter. The results are all that matters. So you, Dave, are, talking about, <laughs> you are talking about the actual field of play, yeah. which, yes, I would thoroughly okay. agree with you. Knowing more options and more talent takes – Literal That's, pressure off of Jalen Hurts. Does it? We are talking about the <laughs> metaphoric sense. Yes, Let's, it does. Having oh, more help. Oh, takes the, less the only reason we're not, I'm not talking, we're not talking about the same pressure. Know, we are on the same I know, page. but but <laughs> yeah, 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 no, 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 because <laughs> because I'm trying to I'm trying to understand my man Dave over there because he said he got Saquon, yep. he got AJ Brown, yeah, right. he got Dallas Goddard, yeah. he got Devontae. Uh, Devontae. Yeah. It, the game should be easy. Well, last year he was stinky, Easy. and he had Devontae Smith. He did. He had, uh, he had Devontae uh, Swift. He had a, um, DeAndre, Swift. DeAndre Swift. He had Dallas Goddard. Yeah. He had A.J. Brown. He did. All right, I hate what and I'm about to And he stunk. But, but we, I hate but, what I'm about to So no pressure? We, he didn't we stink. Cooked, we were very hard on him last year. We were. He stunk, though, with I, all I them people. I don't think he stunk, but he, he didn't stink. We, were, we didn't stink, but we were hard on him last year. Okay, hold on. So he was a second-team All-Pro. 
and then he's coming off a season to where you probably really, and just if we keep it at a buck, you probably really can't put him in the top 10 at the quarterback play from last season. No, sir, you cannot. Right? No, no, not at all. Thank you. So not that's that's not playing good football. Those bottom two-thirds at, of the league. At all, with, with all these weapons around. And now you add Saquon Barkley, a better weapon than Swift, we all can agree, and you telling me that no – like, you going to come out here and play the same way? There's No, the pressure's on you to, to, to deliver. There would be pressure – there would be more pressure on Jalen Hurts, again, if the Eagles were like, what do you need a better running back for? We're paying you, man. The Eagles are doing everything they can to take the pressure off of him to make his job easier. But as if, long as he as long as he performs, well, that's yes, the name he, of the game in the yeah. NFL. But for me, but, 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 if you don't, but if you don't perform and we can see that There's the no team excuse. has done nothing that's to help where I'm you, going. then perhaps you get yes. a bit more grace. If the team has gone through great lengths mm. and paid lots of money mm. to bolster the roster mm. around you and you struggle, yeah. then the pressure to me it's is excuse. higher especially based on the fact that we've seen you play at the highest level. Y'all are all highly competitive people. Y'all played in the league. Would you, if it was you, would you rather have Saquon Barkley or Grace? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so serious. I'm so but, but what I'm saying, though, too, is, like, when Saquon Barkley comes over here, I know I cannot play bad. That part. Yeah. That part. He yeah. already that knows part. he can't if, play if, bad. But, but if I'm a quarter, but I'm just saying, if he didn't have those pieces, we would be like, they need to help him. They need to put some pieces right. around. So to me, that's no pressure. Yeah. Pressure let's, is if you have everything to be successful and you still stink. No, no, no. Let's quickly talk Ooh. about, and I, by quickly, I mean literally like two minutes. Dave, it's kind of that whole Dak Prescott conversation. Because for so long, we said, man, the Cowboys need a number two wide receiver. Okay, you got CeeDee Lamb. Cowboys need a number three wide receiver. Man, Cowboys need a more explosive running back after Zeke got up there in age. Man, Cowboys need a dependable tight end. Oh, now you had Dalton Schultz. Then there came a point where we were like, what else does Dak need? Exactly. Because he had Amari. He had CD. Mm -hmm. He had Schultz. He had Zeke. He had Pollard. He had a good old line. Uh, he needs a healthy offensive line because Tyron was hurt. And then Travis Frederick had to retire. So there comes a point where Jalen, in my mind, truly has no offensive excuse. No offensive excuse. And neither does his coach. I mean, new offensive coordinator, <laughs> lost Jason Kelsey. You can always find it. Man, look, I hope people appreciate the grace I am giving Jalen Hurts after what Dak was not given True. in 2022. There, there are so many moving parts to this thing. My only, my, my only point is that if you're Jalen Hurts and you know nobody gives a damn anyway and that this is a bottom line business, yeah. you got to yeah. win. You would rather have the Saquon talent. Barkley. You would rather sure. know that you have so, all this help. So, so really quick, let's say he has a year like he had this year. What's, if, your, what's your thoughts on Jalen Hurts? The, the Eagles will probably, without admitting it, be looking for a way out of that contract. Okay, so than later. how is it no pressure? There's always <laughs> pressure, James. There is always that. That I'm is true saying, for every quarterback. I'm just saying, if you don't play well with all these NFL. weapons, you just said they're gonna be thinking about how to get out of that contract. That's pressure. Pressure is a given. But what would would you rather have help? To so take that pressure off. Much is given, much is required, Dave. That's true. Hey. It's in the book. I would, I would still, rather. <laughs> I'd still rather be given it because <laughs> guess what? <laughs> if you're paying a quarterback, I can't pull a shady and make up a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> it was good though. Oh, I got, I got to go to break, Dave. I got to go to break. I got to go to break. Speaking of pressure, Justin Fields might have more pressure on him than any athlete in America because he is yet to deliver, and the team that drafted him is looking for a way out. But get this: the Las Vegas Raiders are allegedly in the running. This is the news that could shake up the NFL draft, the biggest sports spectacle remaining on the calendar in football. Woo! Should the Raiders want him or not? That's next on Steve. Family, the most important part of free agency are the names behind me. These are the quarterbacks. These are the most important pieces in the biggest sport in America. Where have so many of them landed? Well, let's start with Russell Wilson. That might be the biggest domino that's fallen. He went from the Denver Broncos to the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then how about Kirk Cousins? I never thought that he would leave Minnesota, but he's going to be the quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons, led by new head coach Raheem Morris. Gardner Minshew, he made a move in Sam Darnold literally overnight. I'm in bed prepping for the show, and I see on my phone, Sam Darnold signs a one-year, $10 million deal with the Vikings. Could Sam Darnold, former first-round pick out of USC, lead the Vikings back to the promised land? We will see, but here's a notable omission, at least as it pertains to a big-time name, Justin Fields. He ain't gone nowhere yet. Quarterback for the Chicago Bears. Well, get this. I recently read this tweet. 
as the market shrivels up for Justin Fields, the Raiders are kicking the tires on Justin Fields, a possible reunion with offensive coordinator Luke Getze. Yes. Well, I have to bring in James Jones because he knows Luke Getze very well. Luke yep. Getze, James, your former wide receiver coach. In Green Bay. In yep. Green Bay. Luke Getze, the former offensive coordinator for the Chicago Bears. But here's the invaluable insight that we get being a part of this show. James, you played for the Raiders, yep. led that team in touchdowns, led that team in receiving yards, led that team in target, led that team in receptions. Hey. You currently do a post-game show for the Raiders. How did I get released? I don't know. I don't know. I don't make the decision. But James, <laughs> you know the Raiders better than anybody on national television. So should the Raiders want this man, Justin Fields? I'm all ears. Absolutely. And the main reason why is you get a young fella under center, you're going to get him at the right price, the right trade, right? Early when this thing started, it's going to take a second, sure. a third round. Now you might be able to get him for a sixth, seventh round and be able to have him come into your organization. And we know when he's playing at a high level, he can win you some games. But not only that, you have put yourself in a position to really make this trade because if he doesn't play well, you have a guy that just came from the Pro Bowl that you signed a two-year deal with in Gardner Minshew to be able to say he's not playing good, we are going to put Gardner Minshew in the game. But this, this allows them to have an opportunity as a first-round quarterback to see what he does. And for me, let Antonio Pierce do what he wants to do with that first-round pick, even if it's on the defense, and build that defense up and the Raiders will let's, have a chance. Let's have a conversation between two former athletes that's deeper than X's and O's. You mentioned the name Antonio Pierce. Antonio yeah. Pierce, if we're being honest with ourselves, he is the least qualified head coach as it pertains to mm. coaching experience. Coaching experience. Not as okay. it pertains to talent, Great. not as it pertains yeah. to ability, just as it pertains to yeah. coaching experience. How many years did you coach yeah. defensive coordinate at the professional level, position coach at the yeah. professional level? So as it pertains to True. coaching experience, that's all I'm saying, an objective fact. If I'm Antonio Pierce, my first time as a head coach, and I know my resume is a little shoddy, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to tether myself to a quarterback that hasn't proven much of anything. What Raheem Morris did in Atlanta to me is brilliant. Yeah. He said, I'm going to get Kirk Cousins. No doubt. Because at a minimum, yeah. Kirk Cousins is going to keep me around 8 to 10 wins. No They're not firing yeah. me for 8 to 10 wins. Uh -huh. I don't think Antonio Pierce can run the risk of acquiring Justin Fields. What do you say to that? You know Pierce. Well, my only thing is, is... If it ain't him, it's a rookie coming in. So you got to put your trust in a rookie. Who knows how that rookie going to go? We've seen a lot of rookies come out that we praised extremely high, didn't turn out to be that good. So for me, taking a shot on him, you're really not going to get in that much trouble because you gave up a fifth, sixth round pick to get him, right? Number two, do what you're supposed to do on your side of the ball. Got you. There is no Kirk Cousins out there that's going to come in there and help you, Antonio Pierce, right now. And that's why for me, and I think Antonio Pierce does a really good job of, Lean on your coaches. The man just coached Justin Fields, Lou Getze. You hired him as your offensive coordinator. Hey, bruh, is he that dude? Should we bring him over here? Is he worth a fifth, sixth round pick? Like, will he help our team win football well games said. and go off of that? So Antonio Pierce is in a good situation because Minchu is there. But you got the guy that coached this dude last year, knows all about him. Listen to him. Incredibly well said. Let's see what everyone else has to say. Joy, you've watched a lot of Justin Fields. You had had way too many debates, particularly with LaShawn McCoy, about <laughs> Justin Fields. Should the Raiders want one of the most polarizing quarterbacks in the NFL today? Yeah, absolutely. They should definitely go get him. Yeah. There's not a whole lot left on the market in regards to a Russell Wilson or Kirk Cousins and guys in that space. As you mentioned, People are being signed. Moves are being made. So the, the market is becoming even smaller. You're getting down to this is your only option or a rookie. Well, let's take a look at mm. where the Raiders are and how feasible that is. Let's see. They pick at 13. Mm. Let's look at the teams ahead of them. Chicago Bears, they're going to be getting a quarterback, quarterback. obviously. Oh, one gone. Uh, Commanders. Two gone. Patriots. Three gone. Most likely. Giants. Four gone. Titans. Five gone. Jets. Yeah. Broncos. Broncos. Yeah, ten, uh, what's that? Nine gone. Yeah, that's a lot. Oh, there ain't even nine of them in there, though. We're exaggerating. <laughs> it ain't even nine yeah, quarterbacks in there. All these teams are taking quarterbacks, of course. Yeah. Enough of them, Mike, though. We don't yeah. know if all those teams are taking quarterbacks. I mean, what I'm saying is it would be six, perfectly reasonable if all of those teams did take quarterbacks. So that being the case, you're picking where you're picking. It doesn't make sense. You're not going to trade up in the draft for – that far, especially when there are that many teams who are sitting ahead of you that want a quarterback. This is a deep draft. I don't know how deep it actually is. So you're going to take a swing either way. Now, perhaps it works out. It's a rookie and you found your next franchise quarterback. Or perhaps it doesn't. 
I just think that Justin Fields is a – he's a talented football player. Is he a refined quarterback yet? No. But this is a situation where you can develop him. I do think he has more football left to play. I think it's a unique situation. And picking where you're picking, I, I, I don't like the idea of taking some big swing to move up in the draft. We've seen that done by teams recently. It hasn't worked out that great. It's a huge risk. And who's to say how much they're, they're going to ask for? Because there are so many teams ahead of you that want quarterbacks and need quarterbacks. So I like it for the Raiders, especially if you can get him, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a reasonable trade. And well, I think no. Justin Fields, you know, what he's capable of yet, I don't think we know. I think he's did he's That's gotten he's gotten better. Well, I'm not as high as, as James, mm -hmm. although I have been a defender of Justin yeah. Fields for some time. I, I'm not as high. I do think that he does have potential, though. Which is, which is what you're taking in a rookie anyway. Is he a talented football player, Dave, or is he a talented athlete? At this junction in time, it's hard for me to say he's a talented football player because I haven't seen him play a lot of football talentedly at the NFL level. Talented athlete, I think, is one of the best athletes in the National Football League. So I, I, think, do, I think he's four, a talented four. football player. I just don't know how talented of a quarterback he is. But uh, I, we're kind of saying the same thing. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I'm saying. Like, I don't think he's yeah. refined at the position yet. I think that's fair. He hasn't found ways to consistently win. That's obviously fair. But I think he has raw materials to work with. And I'm not just trying to say he's just athletic. I do think he actually has the potential to develop into a quarterback. But it didn't happen in Chicago. Right. In his defense, it's kind of never happened in Chicago. So I think this is a great opportunity for him, and I think it's a good opportunity for the Raiders. What happens if Antonio Pierce and Tom Telesco, that's the GM in Vegas, mm -hmm. what happens if they trade up? And I'm not going to say a name. It doesn't matter. They trade up for the third best quarterback in the draft. They give up a haul to get there, yeah. and he's not any good. What mm -hmm. happens? Mm -hmm. At a minimum, you got two and a half years. Everybody's exactly. fired. Thank you, Joy. But you, but you got two and a half. Oh, cool. Two and a half years, <laughs> and then you're out if it doesn't work. What happens if they trade a day three pick for Justin Fields and it doesn't work? Nothing happened. You're like, oh, you took a swing and it didn't work. Big deal. Big whoop. You don't have to pick up his option. At this rate, nobody's going to pick up Justin Fields' option, the $20 million option you have to decide on by May. So, you, okay, we took a swing. It didn't work out. We try again next year. Yeah. We'll still have our first-round pick, which if you trade up for that rookie quarterback, not. you will not have that first-round pick. It is a huge risk. And for, furthermore, I, I don't get the impression, James, you would know better than me, the Raiders don't look like a team that's ready to contend. Like, I mean, I, I, I mean, Raiders fans might not want to hear that. <laughs> they don't look like they're ready to be in there with the big boys in 2024. Maybe next year you're better positioned to do that. I think Justin Fields could be a ph phenomenal bridge. He wouldn't be expensive to get there. He competes with Gardner Minshew for the starting job. And, hey, if it works out and you are the team that unlocked Justin Fields, good on you. You could probably even extend him, and maybe not even at the top of the market. Maybe you could get a Baker Mayfield price for him and build your team around that guy. I think there's so much upside and so little downside, whereas there is a lot of downside to taking that risk. I at guess, the top James, of the it depends on what you give up for Fields, for me and my no mind. No question. Point, because if you give up a third-round pick for no, Fields, no. well, that third-round pick could still be used on a quarterback who we weren't thinking of. He's not the Penix. He's not the Daniels. He's not the Caleb. He's not the May, et cetera. But you think of a guy like Kirk Cousins, fourth-round pick. Yep. Guy like Russell Wilson, oh, third-round pick. Dak Prescott. Guy like Dak Pre oh, fourth-round pick. Kirk Cousins and Russell Wilson, two of the names I just mentioned on this screen here. It's a whole here. hell of a lot It's not. That, by it's way. not. It's not at all. But Justin Fields, to me, hasn't shown enough promise to give up more than a third, more, more than a fourth Four. I, I shoot. I was gonna say second, third when this thing first started. Now with it dragging out being this long, I think we're looking at fifth, sixth round, and that's why I'm saying the Raiders can give up a fifth, sixth round and get Justin Fields. To, they're going to have to get rid of Justin Fields for something. You're going to want to get something for him, yeah. right? Caleb Williams is coming in there. You're not going to have Justin Fields backing up Caleb Williams. That's just crazy. So, Ooh, but wait a second. Just thought of this. I'm not giving up Justin Fields for a fifth or six. I might hold him at least till camp. Somebody goes down, somebody like, you remember, you know what it is, buy low, sell high. What y'all are suggesting, Dave, and you primarily, James, is buy high, sell low. That's counterintuitive. So if I, if I got, I would rather keep Fields, okay. draft Caleb, no and way. trade okay, Fields for a... Is, now, Fields is not really like, to me that works for somebody that is a bona fide backup quarterback. Like somebody that can come in and you you know they can serve that role. I know teams get desperate when somebody goes down, and, but I feel like that's a risky game to play as well. Not only – you, you guys played. You tell me, but it sounds like a bad – I get it. You, you want to sell high. You don't want to part with Justin Fields for a fifth-round pick. But 
if he's there, like if Justin Fields is in the locker room oh, the yeah, day yeah, that yeah, Caleb yeah. Williams he's is giving even, his but, introductory yeah, presser. Yeah, but he's, not, he's, bad. he's bad. not even it's showing up. It's bad for the locker bad room. Not showing up. It's half the, I don't know if y'all are as addicted to social media as I am. Half the Bears fan base is still convinced Justin Fields <laughs> isn't going anywhere. Yeah, I kind of so, like low-key hope they do this. It'll be great content. It would be the most toxic thing ever. It would be great content for us, but it would be so toxic, so awkward. I just... I don't know how you get away with that. The Raiders under Antonio Pierce are the number one defense in football. What's the sample size? When we seen, it don't matter. When we seen Justin Fields (laughs) come back from injury and this Bears defense played halfway solid, my man was winning and in football games. So put some defense around him, man. They're going to have the number one defense again in Washington. I'm so oh, glad Jaden's <laughs> not here. Because like, what he would have said to that. I'm glad that Jaden's my friend, because I know if somebody you know says something bad about me, I, I'm right. he's going to be like, no, <laughs> these are all I'm the loyal. things that, yeah. I, I don't I understand, yeah. but these are all the things that she does really well. I don't know where that no loyalty was yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Oh, sorry, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of toxicity and disloyalty, Saquon Barkley, he left the Giants, joined the Eagles. But former Giants legend Tiki Barber, his criticism was crazy. Dead to us, you said. You are dead to us, Saquon Barkley. OG's taking it too far. We got to weigh in next on Speak. Well, it definitely mattered that Saquon Barkley is not staying with the Giants because, boy, did he burn some former Giants greats. Taking his talent to Philadelphia, Saquon Barkley, former top five pick for the New York Giants just five years ago, and now he's no longer a Giant. But here's the kicker, y'all. He's staying in the division, going to a division rival. Well, that didn't land too kindly with former Giant Tiki Barber. Dead to us now. Yeah, say it. He's dead to us. Because he won't say it. You're dead to us, Saquon. Good luck. You're dead to me. Now, Saquon Barkley responded at Tiki Barber. You've been a hater since I got to New York. And all that dead to me talk, don't smile in my face when you see me. Close quote. If you notice Saquon Barkley's new profile picture, him in an Eagles uniform. Well, the screen above him in a Giants uniform. Tiki Barber, former Giants great running back. For context, if you don't know Tiki Barber. Joy, I can't wait for you to sound (laughs) off on this one. Did Tiki take it too far? Yeah, absolutely. Come on. First of all, Saquon Barkley plays professional football. What does the word professional mean? It means you get paid to do a service. This is what he does for a living. He is not volunteering his services to the New York football giants. All right, does he get volunteer hours from this? (laughs) Are they a nonprofit? Did I miss something? This is what he does for a living. So if the New York giants do not want to pay Saquon, to run the football, which is what he does for a living, then Saquon has every right to take his services to another company, which happens to be the Philadelphia Eagles, which happens to be in the division. What loyalty does he owe someone who is not paying him? Forget what's happened in New York. Forget the fact that he was the only reason that we were talking about the Giants for years. Forget the fact that he had to carry the team offensively and have any relevance in the, in the space because, I mean, they haven't won the division in, what, 11 years? It's been a minute. And someone else wins that division every single year. So they had to try hard to do that. Forget all of that. <laughs> the bottom line is Saquon Barkley does not own the Giants anything. Not. What's he supposed to do, retire? <laughs> What are the options? He's not supposed to go play for the Eagles? This is a very personal thing for me. This is why I speak very, very loudly about not being loyal in professional sports. There is no loyalty in professional sports. In fact, there's not even any loyalty in college sports anymore. It is a fantasy that is sold to fans, and fans should be loyal. That's the point, right? That's That's what sports is. We have loyalty to the teams. Teams do not have loyalty to players. Therefore, players should not have loyalty to teams. There are very small, unique circumstances where this works, and teams go out of their way to, to keep players happy, and it's very, it's very limited and small. My brother played in the league for a very long time. He played the bulk of his career with the Miami Dolphins. He very much wanted to finish his career with the Miami Dolphins. In the year 2010, the Miami Dolphins did not want his services. That he was still delivering at a very high level. Yeah. He took the option that was given to him by the New York Jets to go play for that team. A team that he had, of course, spoken terribly about throughout his career (laughs) because they are a rival within the division. The Dolphins fans hate the Jets. But now the Dolphins don't want to pay you anymore. Mm -hmm. So you're going to go play for the Jets because what are your other options? Retire? No. (laughs) And it was very, very difficult for him because he knew that 
Dolphins fans were not going to take it well. And he cared about the city and he cared about the organization, the people in the organization, and he cared about how people were going to perceive this legacy-wise. Now, of course, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer and is beloved in the city, and it, it, it means nothing now. But the point of the matter was, I watched how difficult that decision was for him because his only option was to go play for a team that he knew people would be upset, reasonably or not, about him playing there. Saquon Barkley should play wherever he wants. He does this for a living. Yeah. If this building does not want to employ you anymore, you are going to take your services to another place, as you should. Now, hopefully you spend your entire career here and you're very happy. Me as well, I'm just using an example. <laughs> for whatever it is you do, you work for the light company, you work for an accountant, another accounting firm wants to pay you and that one doesn't, go work there. This is, it's really very crazy how we expect players to be loyal to a place that is not even trying to pay them. They're not even trying, they don't want you there. So now, you don't want me, but I still owe you something? I can't travel, I can't go down this path. It, this, is, this is a fantasy, it's for fans, it is not for the professional conversation, it's nonsense. Does it matter, James, phenomenal take, Joy, phenomenal take, and appreciate the story. James, does it matter the speaker? Because it's interesting, it's, Joy said, what is he supposed to do, retire? Mm -hmm. Crazy enough, if you recall the career of Tiki Barber, that is what he did. He retired now, and obviously is being facetious here to a degree, but Tiki Barber played his whole career with the New York Giants, mm -hmm. 10 years. He rushed for 10,000 yards. He retired in his prime following a 1,600-yard season in 06. 05 had an 1,800-yard season. Why would Tiki retire? He only played his career with the New York Giants at running back where he had 10,000 yards, where he retired in his prime. Now, there was a lot more to that. Tom Coffin ran a military-like style, and he was tired of getting his body beat up. But, James, when you think about an OG player saying something like this, and you played with Brett Favre, who left and went to play for the Vikings, yeah. when you think about somebody saying something like this, does it make any sense mm -hmm. to you? Tinky. Shut up. <laughs> that's, that's, man, come on, man. This, this, is, this is crazy. I hate when dudes come out, <laughs> former players come out, oh, he dead to me, this and that, because he left. Last year, Saquon Barkley, they didn't want to pay him last year. Correct. My man is sitting out, holding out. You pay Daniel Jones, and we know the whole offense was Saquon Barkley. Why you ain't come out and say nothing about the Giants? Why you ain't come out of your pocket? Mm. This offseason. You mad Saquon Barkley ain't getting paid? The Giants said they was going to let him explore a free agency like they was not going to pay him. Tinky, why you ain't come out of your pockets? You were 10 years in the league. This young man is five years in the league. Brett Favre was 19 years in the league. This man is still young and in his prime, and one team does not want his services like Joy is saying. I ain't finna be out here talking about which team I ain't going to play for because they're in the division. You're talking 48 M's where I sign. Mm. I'm a running back. They're not paying the running backs. I hate when former players come out and talk like this because to me this is crazy because at the end of the day, as a professional football player, it's all about how much money you can get because if you're not playing at a high level, they're going to do you like they did Aaron Jones. They're going to do you like they do a lot, of these, a lot of these players out here. Hey, man, your play falling off a little bit. We need some of that money back. Or we need you to take a pay cut. We don't see none of these former players coming out saying nothing about the organization then. So Saquon Barkley did exactly what he was supposed to do. Go get the bread from a team who wanted him and an organization who wanted him. Obviously, the last two years, the Giants have showed Saquon Barkley that they did not want him. That's the crazy thing to me is, I mean, you expect this from like a run-of-the-mill radio host, right? Or, or somebody who didn't play football. Right? <laughs> like that, I mean, that stuff happens. And like, fans are gonna burn jerseys and all that other stupid stuff that they do because fans are emotional. For what though? What is oh, that, that's, what, that's beside the point. It's stupid no yeah. matter what. But you expect it from an emotional fan who can't think beyond, I hate that team. But a guy who did this at the highest level, like he's part of y'all's brotherhood. And I like it's it's a very commonly used term, but it it's so true. Like it is a brotherhood. You always see a level of respect among former football players of like, hey man, get get it, get the bag. Oh, no. Get to, get what's best for you. Go to the best opportunity. Saquon Barkley is 27 years old. Oh, and we talk about this guy, like, damn, he's Getting kind of up there, huh? 27 years old. And, like, this might be the last real opportunity oh, that gosh. he gets to make that generational, family-changing type of money. And if it's a team in the division, I am sorry about it, but I do not give a damn. That no, is my no, employer. No, no, no. 
Joy, I wanted to go back to your point. Giants have looked a little bit like a nonprofit here for about five or six years. You know, <laughs> they are, they, they really don't they run themselves looked, like, a, like a, an organization that's interested in, in competing. I, I expect people talking crazy when, it, when it's a fan, when, when the emotions of it get involved. You hear, I mean, they call them shock jocks on the radio for a reason. They're supposed to say stuff that gets a rise out of people. But it was, it was wild and disappointing to hear it from a guy who knows exactly what it's like to be in Saquon Barkley's shoes. That and was the a money aside. For me. The money aside, like, obviously, we want, we should want everyone to make as much money as they can in this very short amount of time that they have to even play at the highest level and to make that money because you cannot play football forever. What is this pitch about loyalty? What are we even talking about? This is, a, this is what he does for a living and they don't want yeah. him. Our friend Jordan Schultz said they didn't even make him an offer. They make right? him an offer. But not only they that, didn't make him an my offer. man was loyal to y'all last yeah. year. He played on a one-year deal, put himself in a situation to where he could have got hurt James, and not me, even have an opportunity let me, let me, for this deal. Let me ask you, because you've, you've, you've lived it at the highest level. Um, Tiki Barber, he said February 22nd, he says he, Saquon Barkley deserves to be a giant forever. That's what he said. He wanted Saquon to be a giant. Tiki obviously isn't a part of not offering Saquon yeah, a deal. Thank you. James, when you were in Green Bay, mm-hmm. you played there seven years straight. Seven years straight. And then and you went to, the Raiders, went to the Raiders. Yeah. Would you have gone to the Vikings? Or would you have gone to... The ba- Let's go Bears, because not even Viking. Though. At that point in time, y'all and the Bears had a more contentious yeah, yeah, yeah. conversation. Would you have gone to the Bears to team up with Jay Cutler uh-huh. and to team up with Peanut mm-hmm. Tillman and to team up with yep. Matt Forte? Like, yep. would you have gone to the Bears after yep. all those intense Like yesterday. Back? Like yesterday. <laughs> Immediately. I'd have walked through the locker room in Green Bay. I'd have grabbed all my stuff. I probably had had a Bear shirt on. <laughs> hey, man, I appreciate all y'all. I love all y'all. Y'all my teammates. But I'm out of here, man, down the road three hours, man. You you know what I'm saying? Y'all want to catch a bite to eat when we play y'all? Let's do it. But I'm gone. They offered me more money than the Packers. Matter of fact, Packers didn't even offer me. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Bears did. So you know what? I got to go. I got to feed these kids. And, you know and what? I got to feed this family. I'm I would expect here. inside that locker room, to a man, they, no would, all, they would all be like, hey, no I don't wish you well for two afternoons next fall, but I get yeah. it, man. You got to do what's right. And, and that's why it's so this crazy. This is an unserious conversation. It's, it's ridiculous. This is, a nonsense, this is an unserious conversation from the nonsense farm he <laughs> is a professional farm. athlete I, I professional say? that means you get paid to do something if some company does not want to pay you you have every right to go to a competing company yeah. Yeah. and the only answer should be thank you so much for putting <laughs> your body on the line as much as you could for getting doing surgeries and rehab and listening to all the nonsense that we talk about in the media all day long about how bad you are and how much you don't contribute to winning even though we haven't done we haven't won the division in 11 years but somehow it's Saquon Barkley's fault and when he has an opportunity as a young man that he's worked for yeah. to go play for another team. He's betrayed you? Yeah. Nah. I got a question. This is an unserious conversation. Yeah. Please stop mixing these emotional feelings with professionalism. And here's what really bothers me about it. This is really what bothers me about it. Sorry, I have to say it. I have to say it. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, other stuff to- <laughs> <laughs> so this is what bothers this is you. What bothers yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Come on. Because it's presented as this is an indictment on Saquon's character. Yeah. That is what bothers me. Mm. That is what bothers me. Saquon is a professional. He gives back to the community. Mm-hmm. He's a great representation for the NFL. He's been the face of your organization for the entirety of the time that he's been there. And now because you don't want to keep him there and he goes to your competitor, now all of a sudden you can slander his character? Yeah. That is what bothers me about it. There is nothing wrong with what Saquon did. He did exactly what he was supposed to do, and he should do it 10 times out of 10. As James said, he should have done it yesterday. Yeah. And it's nothing. It's not an indictment of the Giants. It's not an indictment of the Eagles. And it is certainly not an indictment on Saquon's character that he is going to give his services to another team that wants to pay him to do it. All of this is true. I agree with all this wholeheartedly. But do you all take, like, though there's nothing wrong with what Saquon did, is there something wrong with, given who Tiki is, not Joy, not James, not Dave, not Emmanuel, given who Tiki Barber is, he might be the Giants' all-time rushing leader. I may be wrong, but 10,000 yards is probably a lot. Great job. Um, yeah. One of the best Giants ever. Yeah. Given who Tiki is and how Tiki lived, and the fact that Tiki only played for one team, can you 
say, oh, you know what? I see, I don't agree with you, Tiki, but I see why you said it because of your experience as a running back with one team, 1,600 yards, whole career there. You gave everything there. Can you see why he said it, James Jones? Like, the, he, he lived a different life than yeah. we did. Joe, he doesn't want anything to do with that. Shit! <laughs> so, Tinky, that's truly how I feel about it. Because at the end of the day, you played 10 years. You made a lot of money. This man has not had a big payday. This is his time. He came back last year and played on a team-friendly deal for you because you did not want to get this man a long-term deal. He could have... If Saquon would have went out there and had a season into injury, mm. right... Tinky wouldn't have came out and said nothing. And that's what the, that's the position the Giants put him in. Mm. And now that I had a solid year and I stayed healthy and played, played through the season, and you don't want to give me a contract extension, I'm going to somebody else. And I don't care if it's in the division. I don't care if it's the team next door. I do not care. I'm going to play football somewhere else. I am not in year 10. And even if I was in year 10 and I wanted to go play for somebody else, I would do that too. That is crazy to me that Tinky would even say that. That's not even what we do as the brotherhood in the NFL. You should be happy a guy is going to get his money. I do got a question for you, Joy. I have to go to break. A, to go to break no, no, real quick, because I know it's probably a lot of people there. Where is Nonsense Farm at? <laughs> <laughs> it's busy. <laughs> Probably a lot of people there. All right, family. $295 million are between the two quarterbacks I'm about to say, Kirk Cousins and Baker Mayfield. They're in the same division. They're both joining teams either for the second year or for the first year. Who has a better chance to take that division? Who we got more faith in? That's the, my favorite conversation of the day. It's the next conversation of the day. That's not what I thought he was about to ask. <laughs> Let's get to overtime, family. We got to talk about this one. It might be the most intriguing topic today. Baker Mayfield staying in Tampa, $115 million up to Kirk Cousins, up to $180 million to leave Minnesota and head to Atlanta. Now, Atlanta, they have Todd head coach Raheem Morris. Meanwhile, the Bucks, they got head coach Todd Bowles. Todd Bowles in his second year, Raheem Morris in his first year. James, let me ask you this question. Maybe the hardest question I will ask you today, the most difficult one to answer. You got more faith. In Baker's Bucks or in Kirk Cousins' Falcons? $180 million, $100 million guarantee. Mm-hmm. $100 million, $50 million guarantee. I think everybody in the National Football League got more faith in Kirk Cousins. I don't know what this table up here got, what y'all got going on. <laughs> but I got more faith in Kirk Cousins. And we're talking regular season. Kirk Cousins makes the Atlanta Falcons really the favorite in this division, in my humble opinion, especially with what he has offensively. We know Kirk Cousins is a really good quarterback in the regular season. Offensively, Cal Pitts, you got Drake London, you got a phenom at the running back position in B. John Robinson. You just signed Darnell Mooney, who's another good route runner. I got more faith in Kirk Cousins. Yeah, I didn't think this was going to be so tough. Vegas agrees with you, by the way, because they are favored to win the division. Mm. I I will say, Kirk, and I know the Falcons don't care about this Achilles, because they ran him back. But, I mean, are Man. we at all worried about this Achilles injury? Yes. I am. Because I'm, like, a 30, little concerned. 35-year-old <laughs> people. With... A little concerned. Now, I don't really think Kirk, of Kirk is a guy that's, like, going to get out the pocket and do some, some fancy footwork here, mm. but <laughs> it is an Achilles. Obviously, the Falcons don't care. I tend to lean towards the Falcons as well because of their offensive weapons, but I, I do not – I listen to – I listen to some Baker pitches. I know. One <laughs> I like Baker. I like Baker and the Bucks. One, because of the continuity, first and foremost. Continuity of having a head coach who was there before in Todd Bowles. He lost his OC, though. He did lose his OC. Huge deal. OC went to the Carolina Panthers in Canales. You yeah, got to c- confirm the uh, pronunciation. But yeah, in Canales. But I also like the consistency. You know you got Mike Evans. You know you got Baker Mayfield. So you know you got 1,000 yards just off GP. Just right there, you know you got 1,000. Who's the better player? Baker and Kurt. To me, I view them as very equal. I know that you all don't, but when I look at them, Baker Mayfield does not scare me. Kirk Cousins does not scare me. Kirk Cousins can get hot. Baker Mayfield can get hot. So when I look at Kirk and I look at Baker, I genuinely look at them as very equal. Last year, Baker Mayfield, 4,000 yards passing, 26 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. I might be two touchdowns off there. Let's check. 28 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. So when I say, when you ask me who's the better player, if Kirk's better, it's not so substantial, Dave Hellman, that that would skew my answer dramatically. Uh, let's, I mean, let's make sure we're on the same page about what we're talking about. Like, if we're, if we're projecting this right now, mm-hmm. we're talking about who's going to be the fourth seed in the NFC, right? right? Like, the last division winner. So, 
I think th- th- these are very similar teams. They're very similar rosters. Honestly, I think the Falcons roster is a little bit more exciting. You add Kirk with, with all those, yeah. those big-time draft picks that haven't lived up to expectations yet, but you know they're Correct. super talented. You know better than anybody what Bijan Robinson can do. Something about it, though, I just I think people are quick to write off the Buccaneers. They did it last year. I remember last year sitting here saying, wait a second, Baker Mayfield is not terrible. And the rest of the roster was all there on that Super Bowl team. Mm -hmm. And granted, they've lost a few of those guys. The guys have gotten older. Like I said yesterday, we'll see what happens with Levante David. I don't think Devin White's going to stay in Tampa Bay. I can't. But this is this is still Shaq Barrett goes to Miami today. That's another one worth Mm -hmm. mentioning. But this is still a really good roster with continuity. I know Canales left, but bear in mind, he was only there for one year anyway. Todd Bowles is still the guy calling the shots. Todd Bowles is still a hell of a defensive coach. Antoine Winfield's still there. There's they're still talent huh. in Tampa Bay, and they have already proven they can exceed ex- expectations. We know that what the offense can do. Mike Evans is back. Baker is now back. Mm. Feel good about Chris Godwin. I feel like nobody talks about Rashad White when you talk about 1,000-yard yeah. rushers last year. I don't have a good selling point. Like, this is definitively – I know, right? I, you shouldn't say that on TV. <laughs> I basically just it, – it's never – but it's never as easy as we like to make it look. Like, how many segments did we do – on the New York Jets last year. And More I know. More than I care to. 100%. Realize, yes. You never know what's going to happen. And I, hopefully, Kirk Cousins doesn't get injured. That's not my point. But it rarely looks as easy as it seems in March. And I think the Bucks already proved that it's a mistake to forget that they're there. So I'm just not going to. So and I'm going to ride with my guy, Bates. It's just crazy. We don't feel good. It's just crazy. We're talking about the four seed in the NFC. It's just crazy what one year will do. I can imagine. crazy what one year Saints fans are sitting at home right now being like, hey, don't forget about us either. I'm like, Well, the free agency world has been incredibly loud as of late, but Jerry Jones and his moves, real quiet. All quiet on the Cowboys front. The Cowboys have literally done nothing, Dave. Nothing. Are you surprised? Should Cowboys fans be irate? Or how in the world should Cowboys fans feel? While everybody else is making changes to win a Super Bowl, Jerry, he's sitting back. That's next on Speed. Jerry Jones has yet to make any moves of substance. The Cowboys, though, quote, said they were all in. But the division champs haven't done anything. Meanwhile, Brian Burns has gone to the Giants out in Carolina. The Eagles have added Saquon Barkley. And the Commanders have added everybody and they mama, whoever Dan Quinn can come up with. Dave, you know the Cowboys better than anybody. Been covering them for nearly 15 years. Yeah. Should Cowboys fans be upset with Jerry Jones? I know if nothing else, this will get several retweets from your followers. Talk to you Cowboys fans right now to the nation. How should they feel? Yeah, upset, confused, however you want to classify it. I mean... The team's won 36 games over the last three years. It's more than anybody but the Kansas City Chiefs. Nothing to show for it in the playoffs. One and three. What are, where are they as a team? What are they doing? They have a franchise quarterback. They don't, want, they don't want to extend him. They have two of the best pieces in Micah Parsons and C.D. Lamb. There's no movement on when those deals get done. They could create cap space. They don't want to. The report last night, the report Monday night, is that they were uncomfortable going in on Zach Moss who was Jonathan Taylor's backup running back. Good player, backup running back in Indianapolis. They're not comfortable pursuing a player of that caliber. That's like me saying, I'm not comfortable buying off the dollar menu. What are we doing here? And I'm not saying you got to splash all that cash. Nobody wants the Cowboys to do that. They have to be willing to do something. They've been doing it this way for a decade, and it's gotten them effectively nowhere. Cool, 36 wins in the regular season over the last three years. This ain't Carolina. This ain't one of those franchises where that's good enough. They're supposed to be pushing for more than that. And they can say everything they want, but it seems like complacency year after year. And I don't think I don't know how you can expect more than what we've seen, which is not good. Nobody says it better when talking about the Cowboys and this man in my right, Dave Hellman. Well, several players have jumped to division rivals who will have the biggest revenge game. Which revenge move do we like the most? That's next on Speak. Revenge, best or sweet in the division. Revenge season, family. Saquon Barkley, former Giant, now an Eagle. Aaron Jones, former Packer, now a Viking. Patrick Queen and Geno Stone, former Ravens, now one's a Steeler and one's a Bengal. Staying in the division, but going to a division foe. What revenge <laughs> player are you most excited for, most excited to see? For me, it's Saquon Barkley. We just had a topic on Tinky talking crazy, so you know what I would do? 
I would go get off the plane in a Tinky jersey and get ready to play. <laughs> that would be me just being petty. <laughs> revenge game, G. Um, yeah, I didn't feel very strongly about it, but now I certainly hope Saquon right. has a revenge game. But also looking at these, he's the most likely to have a revenge yeah. game also. So. Man, how former Packers show up. Yeah. The way Zadarius Smith showed up Ooh. against the Packers when he went to join the Vikings, yeah. I can't wait to see Aaron Jones because there's something about yeah. former Packers when they show up. But not only that, too, not to cut you off, Dave, no, but – those two dudes need help. That's Patrick Queen don't need no help. See ball, hit ball. <laughs> Patrick Queen wants revenge. Yeah, Patrick bro. Queen is like, thank you for helping me get paid. No, I got to see Saquon. Yeah. If, if Aaron Jones gets a better quarterback, I might change my answer. But right now, the Vikings, I don't know. I'll Yo, appreciate y'all hanging with us. We'll see y'all next time.